my name is Jacob Rogers, and for my Decision Sciences 726 project for this semester, I chose to do an analysis of, of Walmart Sales Department sales. By way of introduction to this project, I'm going to go through my four bullet points on this slide one by one, and we'll just knock those off and, and get this thing started. So first off, Walmart really doesn't need a lot of introduction. It is the global force that we are all familiar with, the retail giant who's in grocery and basically any kind of industry you want, they sell it. Um, that kind of convenience, along with how effective they are in managing their inventory, makes them super convenient and easy for shoppers. And I think that is a, really the big selling point that they do, that they draw, they use to draw consumers to their stores. And knowing Walmart in and out is not necessary to understand this project, uh, just that you know Walmart is what's most important. The goals for this project are twofold. First, to forecast sales on a weekly basis. And secondly, to anticipate markdown data, anticipate markdown sales, so they can use that to clear shelves and, and, and basically mark down items at the most effective times. The background for this project was fairly simple and straightforward. There wasn't a lot done on, on my part. I'll go into a little bit about the data collection process, but Walmart um, was known and is known, so um, sort of background research, not a lot was done. Um, the, really, the biggest problem that came up in studying this assignment was the data, finding the data was very easy. Um, it was from Kaggle, and I'll go into that later. Um, there was a bit of an issue with the markdown data um, in that it was only provided for 11 months from November 2011 to um, October of 2012. Um, and I'll go into a little bit more about why I decided that that was okay to use. But for right now, it's, it's sufficient that you just know that that was really the only problem that I came across in beginning this, this analysis. The next step in the process was the acquisition, exploration, and transformation of the data. Uh, for starters, the acquisition, I, I acquired the Walmart data from Kaggle, and it was very simple and straightforward. Kaggle provided weekly sales along with the markdown information for that week, um, which made it really simple and straightforward. I cannot stress how easy this part of the process was. Uh, it was in an Excel spreadsheet, and it took up maybe 10 columns, so very simple, very straightforward, and I really appreciated that. That made this project a lot easier than it maybe could have been, possibly. It could have been a lot harder. Um, in the exploration phase, um, I was mainly just trying to uh, see what the data was saying uh, just right off the bat. Uh, it was really just to provide a baseline um, to get my mind working on what kind of techniques and, and what kind of um, yeah, techniques and processes I wanted to use while um, analyzing the data. Little to no transformation was required. Um, like I said, it was very simple, very straightforward. Um, the data was easy to see, nothing too complex or complicated about it. Um, overall, just this part of the project was easy in the sense that it was simple um, and I moving forward that really helped me later on going more in depth with the exploration of the data um, we're going to specifically look at department 10 um, in the top left corner you'll see a scatter plot of all the weekly sales points um, it's pretty easy to see the seasonal component to this around week 60 and around week 120 there are highs and what that is, is the Christmas season. Um, pretty normal to see for a retail to see an increase in sales around the holiday season. So that wasn't anything that really um, was burdensome or, or caused any issues. I just um, took note and really tried to later on add a seasonal component to my analysis. 
right next to that, uh, the table of just central tendencies. Um, one was recorded for each department that I did. Um, again, just uh, to really get a baseline understanding of, of the data that I was working with. Down at the bottom, um, that table is the uh, table signifying the, the holidays that Walmart recognizes. And specifically, I think that Kegel really drew out. Um, obviously, you see Super Bowl every day, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, and then those are the dates for the four years that the data covered. Um, really, I put that in there just as a reference point to judge or gauge against the seasonal highs that I was seeing. In the specification and design of my project, I started off using a naive method um, for very simple and basic reasons. In every book we've read for this class, it's suggested that the naive method be used first as a sort of baseline to judge other methods. Um, so simply taking the previous period's actual and using that as the forecasted for the current period is all that consisted of. Next, I found a moving average um, for eight periods. I chose eight periods because it represented two weeks of the data, and I thought, uh, sorry, two months of the data. Um, eight periods represented two months, and I thought that that um, accounted for enough of the variability that I saw in the data in using a moving average. I previously spoke about um, a seasonal component that I saw, and I tried to incorporate the seasonal aspect using an autoregression model um, and what that all that took was finding a seasonal index for um, the data and then from um, the data analysis tool found in Excel I was able to use that as a coefficients found in that to get my forecasted values um, in, for the autoregression model and lastly for the markdown information to analyze that I simply just inserted it into a solver table in Excel and was able to uh, judge from there the appropriate decisions to make. Overall, there were three main reasons why I chose these techniques. First and foremost, uh, the ease of use that each of these um, requires. They're not overly technical, which um, I am a fan of. <laughs> um, but along with that, and sort of going into my second point, um, the techniques are capable and effective and time tested. So um, it's not like I was um, sacrificing quality for uh, ease of use. It, I think the quality is still there while it's easy to use. So for me, it was um, sort of a win-win in that respect. And then finally, um, I am a big fan of Excel. Um, I really like it. It's what I want to work in. So doing something in Excel um, really um, was attractive to me in a, in a lot of respects because um, I know it and I also can continue to learn more about it. So using it for this analysis was important to me. So um, we have the techniques laid down and why I use the techniques. Now I can talk a little bit about the results. Um, sadly, I guess not sadly, but um, yeah, sure, sadly, uh, the naive method produced the best results. Um, after all the work, um, I really simply couldn't justify using the autoregression model I used because while at times it did outperform the naive, and we'll see that later um, as I when I present uh, the error rates, um, the naive was just simply more consistent in um, in the way it forecasted. So uh, disappointed, yes, but not surprised because when you take into account um, Walmart department stores, um, there isn't a lot of variability in the customers they see day to day. Um, whether it be seasonal highs or not, um, they get a lot, there's a, a high volume of people who go and buy stuff from Walmart every day. So um, it's not totally surprising that simply using the last week's um, forecast, actual results for this week's forecast proved to be the best. Um, and uh, I guess in another unsurprising um, conclusion would be that when Walmart uses its markdowns, they are most effective after seasonal highs and holidays. And um, at first, that was, um, it didn't come to me 
first why that was the case, and then it simply made sense because they're, <laughs> that's when they put the most things on sale because they're getting rid of seasonal items and um, holiday themed items, and those things go on sale, and that's when people buy them. They don't put things on sale, say like in Mar middle of March. The only information they have is markdown data after Christmas, after Easter, after the Fourth of July, after Labor Day. So it makes sense that it would um, the data would tell me that those are the most effective times to use markdowns. Somewhat going into the mechanics behind my analysis, um, this graph is a graph of the forecasted values along with the actual value. The blue line represents the actual values. The orange line is the naive method. The gray line is the centered moving average, and the yellow line is my auto regression model. And um, this table on the right is uh, has the has actual values just for the last 10 periods. Uh, there's 143 periods, so I didn't think I could fit that all on one page. Uh, I thought it would be useful, though, to show um, how, how uh, the, the numbers behind my analysis. I included this table because this is what uh, essentially led me to choose the naive method over the centered moving average in the auto regression models. As you can see, um, the auto regression model only outperformed the naive when it performed extremely well. Um, you can see in department two and department eight specifically, uh, mean absolute percentage errors are very good. Um, and they outperformed the naive only slightly. And that leads me to my next point. When it didn't perform particularly well, the naive outperformed it in almost every other instance. Um, so while a little bit disheartening for me, um, it was a good lesson um, and a good practical example of choosing the naive. Like, we can't do better than the naive using these models, so just stick with the naive. <laughs> As a way of improving this analysis, um, I think what I would do if I could do it over again is put down on the departments that I analyzed, maybe just choose one, and run more techniques on that one. Um, and maybe even go outside my comfort zone with something outside of Excel. Um, that'll be for next time, obviously. Um, so thank you for watching and listening. Um, hopefully I, I will take any of your suggestions as well um, for things you think I can improve on. Um, so with that, thank you for listening and, and have a great day.